Hey, this is Ryan from Web Eminence. In this video, I'm gonna talk about dynamic search ads in Google Ads and my evolution on them. I haven't used them much over the years, but I've just started to use them a little bit more. I used to hate them, to be honest, and I think now maybe I hate them a little less or maybe I'm even starting to like them, but I'm kind of testing them. Uh, they're highly recommended by Google, obviously, because they want you to just spend more and get more ads showing. But I'm gonna show you how I'm using them lately and testing them. I'll show you a few of the results and maybe you'll be able to try them out on some of your campaigns. So I'm not gonna show you how to create dynamic campaigns because you could go ahead and look in the Google help docs and figure that out for yourself. But I do wanna explain real quick what they are. So dynamic ads will look like this with a dynamically generated landing page, headline and display URL. And then you can write two descriptions. So basically Google's you know, looking at the index of your site and then they're creating ads dynamically based on the pages and keywords on your site. So within this campaign, I could look at dynamic ad targets. I can actually tell the campaign to only target certain categories on my site or certain URLs. So you do have some control to some degree over what ads are showing, but again, they're dynamically generated. So dynamic search ads actually run in regular search campaigns, but they're really created at the ad group level. So if I was to go into a campaign and click add new ad group, at least right now, you gotta select the type. So you have a standard ad group, which is what most people are running. And then you could switch to dynamic and then that's gonna allow you to create dynamic ads within that ad group. So I'm only running dynamic ads in a small percentage of my accounts. I'm kind of in a testing mode right now. Um, sometimes I'm seeing some good results, but not great in some other cases, as you'll see in this video. So there's a few reasons that I might try a dynamic campaign within an account. And usually the a prerequisite is probably gonna be an account that's relatively aggressive. If someone's very strict on budget, and let's say we're getting like 15% click share, we don't have extra budget to spend, I'm probably not even gonna mess with dynamic or consider it. But if someone's fairly aggressive with their budget, we're hitting some limits within their market, I might investigate or experiment with dynamic just to get more volume. So this website might be a good example of a case where it makes sense. Usually it'd be a large website. You can see how many pages are on here with different products and services. And it would take a lot of work to build campaigns for all of these different, you know, keywords and uh, product types and service types. So if you have a large website like this, or your client has a large website, that may be a good opportunity to experiment with dynamic search ads. So one question when you're creating dynamic search ads is do you want to create a dedicated campaign for it? Or do you want it to be just an ad group within a campaign? I'm going to show you both options. So in this account, I actually have a dynamic campaign running. Benefit of this would be that you can control the budget, maybe just keep it low while you're experimenting. A typical benefit of dynamic search ads is you can usually get cheaper clicks. It's not actually the case in this account. It's kind of right in the middle. And actually the cost per conversion is on the high side. So it's not performing great in this account. One thing I will point out in my strategy is that I am limiting dynamic campaigns. So I am choosing the targets, like I mentioned. I'm picking specific categories that the ad can show for. Another thing I do is I go into the main campaigns that I'm running. So on this account, I have search campaigns running and I download the list of keywords or search terms, just the most common traffic that I'm getting. And I actually add those as negative keywords on the dynamic campaign. And the reason I do this is I don't want the dynamic campaign to just be stealing the main keywords from the search campaign. So you see here, some of the main keywords are added in here um, from the search campaign. And this could be a list of hundreds. Sometimes it is, this is just a, it's a small list in this case but it just guarantees that like refrigerated or refrigeration trailer, which is a main keyword in the main search campaign, doesn't get volume in the dynamic campaign because that's not what the dynamic campaign's for. It's really to reach out and get broader keywords for other pages on the site and other products and services like I showed you on that website that we're not actually running specific targeted campaigns for. So here's one other example of a site where I'm running some dynamic uh, search ads, just kind of as a test. Uh, one of the reasons is because this company offers a lot of different services and we're hitting some of them with a main campaign, but we're not hitting all of them. So I'm just testing it out. 
seeing if we could get same results or better results with a dynamic campaign. In this case, I'm actually just running a dynamic ad group inside of the main campaign and really just doing this for simplicity. This account only has one campaign running, so I just didn't want to create another one. In this dynamic ad group, I'm actually using specific URLs from the website to kind of target specific keywords that were maybe not hitting with the main campaign. And if we look at the ad group level, we can highlight the dynamic ad group here. I'm actually running a specific target CPA of $30 on here versus $70 for all the other ad groups. So I'm controlling the cost on the dynamic ad group just to kind of restrict it more. And let's see if it's even hitting that at this point. I don't think it is. It's actually at $160 when my target is 30 and the average is around $50 for the last 120 days on this account. So in this case, it's pretty much failing. Um, I'll probably pause it at some point. It's not spending a lot. It only spent $80 in the last 30 days. It's getting some conversions, but again, I'm testing it and it's pretty much failing at this point. The fact that I have the $30 target CPA is limiting it. So, you know, if it could get $30 conversions, I'll take it. But if not, it's going to automatically limit the volume because it's not able to hit that target cost per conversion. And again, I did go in and I grabbed some of the you know, most popular keywords that are getting volume in these main ad groups. And I added those in as negative keywords or phrases in this case on the dynamic ad group so that it's not cannibalizing those other main ad groups. So it's a very limited ad group in reality. And it's not surprising that it's kind of struggling to perform. I'm restricting it on keywords and I'm also challenging it to get leads at $30. So if it works, great. If not over the long term, I'll probably just pause it or let it run since it's not spending much anyway. So that's how I'm using dynamic search ads right now. I'm curious to hear if you're using them and what kind of results you're getting. So feel free to comment below. Uh, let me know your thoughts on dynamic search ads. I'm obviously still testing. Um, and as you can see from this video, they're not performing great. So not sure if I'll be using them six months from now, but just wanted to show you what I'm doing with them now and maybe I'll give more results in the future. So stay tuned for future videos. Thanks for watching this one and we'll see you on the next one.